What's happening, booth junkies? Mike Delgadio here, back with another video on home studio setup for voiceover-ish kind of things. This is not specifically a voiceover video, but this is a microphone review that may be used in certain voiceover-y kind of situations. I do a lot of video, as you can imagine, and when the folks at Movo who have this offer this microphone, when they offered to send me one for my review for inclusion on the channel, I jumped at the chance because I've gotten to use a couple of different Movo products before. I've been reasonably happy with the performance of their products. And so when they said they had updated their uh, one of their sort of on-camera microphones, their dynamic microphones, I said, yeah, send it to me. I'll share it with my audience and see if it's right for them. Because there are plenty of places where even though this is not specifically voiceover in the sense of recording an audiobook, in the sense of recording broadcast commercials for radio or TV, there's certainly lots and lots of places where we do voiceover. We could be creating voiceovers for our, our home movies. We could be creating voiceover for our e-learning projects at work. We could be creating uh, voiceover for our YouTube channel. Uh, we could be doing talking head style uh, YouTube videos, much like this. And this is a microphone at, a, at the price point, could be just the right thing. So this is the VXR10 Pro Dynamic Shotgun Super Cardioid microphone uh, from the brand Movo. And I'm really grateful to them for sending it over to me. And I'm really happy for the chance to share it with you. I'm not compensated in any way by Movo other than they let me keep the microphone, but they don't get any um, editorial. They don't get to hear this or see it before you do. They just send it to me for my honest review. And I just want to have it. I just want to show you how the microphone performs, talk about some of its specifications to help you decide if this is a microphone that might be good in whatever situation you might use it for. So we're starting out here in my vocal booth. So this is sort of the ideal situation for any microphone. Really nicely acoustically treated, sounds really good. It's quiet, no extraneous noise. So what you're really hearing now is the performance of the microphone itself as it's plugged into a typical Sony point and shoot camera. It's a pretty good point and shoot camera. Uh, this is the Sony ZV-1. Uh, so it's got reasonably good preamps. It's not, you know, a super cheap camera, but this is one that does have an external microphone input. And it can create, you know, a pretty good vlogging style, really compact, good vlogging style setup. And this microphone is sized appropriately for a point and shoot mirrorless camera like this one. So that's one of the reasons why I thought this would be a, a really good, uh, a really good setup to, to share. Let's talk before we go outside. Let's talk very briefly about what you get with this microphone. So you get clearly the microphone itself. You get this uh, this foam pop filter that helps reduce the P's. It's okay for wind. It's okay for wind, but it's really not ideal for wind. This is really a pop filter for what you'd use indoors. And then it comes with a Rycote brand liar style shock mount. Now, if you've watched my channel before, you know that I am an actual believer in Rycote. I've purchased uh, a number of Rycote shock mounts myself. This is my Sennheiser. This is my thousand dollar voiceover microphone. And you see, same brand, same style of microphone, uh, same style of shock mount that they're offering on their $50 microphone. I also use a similar one for my my premium microphones for my actual voiceover work. That's one of the things that attracted me to the Movo product itself. Rather, I mean, I get emails every day from, from companies that want to share this style of microphone with me. But when I saw that there was the Rycote brand, that actually carried some additional weight for me because that's a brand I know and trust. And so when Movo said that this, they have specifically a Rycote branded um, shock mount, that tells me that they're actually interested in quality because I know and trust the Ryko brand. Movo, by using that brand, earns some capital with me. And that's why I actually agreed to get this microphone because I thought well, maybe at the price point, maybe this is a high quality microphone. And you're hearing it now at $50. Do you think that this has got good enough sound? I certainly hope so. This is not the typical situation that you would use this microphone in a, vo a vocal booth like this. If you certainly, if you had one, you certainly could. But we'll also take it out in the control room and we'll also take it outside just to see how this microphone performs. 
Okay, so what I thought I'd do is bring the camera and the microphone down to the beach and just see how it performs in gentle wind. So what I have is a Sony ZV-1 camera. I've got the Movo microphone and I've got the cable that connects the two. So plug this into first, plug it into the line out. Make sure you have the right side. So this is the side with the microphone icon. I'm not sure if you can see that. That's the side with the microphone icon. It goes into the line out. We'll put it into the shoe on the camera. Tighten it up. Plug it into the side of the camera where the uh, mic jack is. And now you've got a pretty standard sort of vlogging setup. So I've put the, uh, the dead cat on it, the, the, the wind puff. Uh, my experience so far, you can see it's a little bit breezy out here, well, judging by what's left of my hair. Uh, it, my experience so far is that this wind puff is mostly effective. We'll talk about that in just a second. We'll see how it performs. So now we're switching over to the Movo and we'll get a sense of how this performs. As you can see, it's pretty breezy out. The wind is going across the microphone. My experience in testing before is that you will get some, you'll still get some of the wind rumble that's in here. My experience also is that you can equalize it out. So the microphone's trying to do you some favors by the way it's naturally equalized, and that is it rolls off a lot of the bass from about 100, 100 maybe closer to 200 hertz. It starts to gently roll off uh, all the way down to minus 10 decibels at 20 hertz. So they're trying to make the microphone friendly for a breezy environment, such that that rumble, that, that wind noise that's really just just deep bass that it largely gets taken away. The wind puff that they give you also helps with that, but it doesn't alleviate all of it. So we, we will probably still get some, uh, some wind noise. If I'm quiet, we'll just listen. So still, I can see the meters moving. Okay, so there, uh, the wind puff helps, the microphone helps, but still some wind noise does come in, and that's okay. We can, we can try and fix that. Hopefully, it will also reduce some of the ambient noise of just the camera. So what I'll do is I'm going to switch now. I'm going to pull the uh, microphone out, and we'll listen to how the camera handles the noise, just to get a side-by-side -side comparison. Okay, so now this is, this is recorded with just the on-camera microphone. The wind is blowing just over the microphone. We'll see if it has a, a significant difference. So I'll just be quiet again as the breeze goes over it. So I can still see the meters moving. We'll see how we'll see how much different it is. Okay, now we're back on the on the Movo microphone, and the thing I'd like to test now is how does it do from a uh, an off-axis rejection. So, is the camera or is the microphone effective at reducing noise from the side? So, we'll also see how it handles the wind in, at different directions. So first, I'm going to face directly into the wind. So the wind is blowing directly into my face now and hopefully there's not a lot of wind noise into the microphone. We'll see. As you can see, it's just, it's reasonably breezy, it's steady. Now if we go side onto the, to the wind, so the wind is blowing across right now, we'll see if the microphone performs significantly different. And then finally, we'll go into the wind. So now the wind is coming over my shoulder and into the microphone, and we'll see how that handles it by comparison and we'll see if we need to equalize it out what do we need to do to equalize it out pretty breezy 
Okay, so now going back uh, headlong into the into the wind, the thing I'd like to do now is test its off-axis rejection. So the the documentation claims that this is a super cardioid microphone, which says that from the side, from the side that the rejection of the sound should be fairly prominent. So as we move the camera to the side, and we're now talking into the side of the microphone, there should be a lot less of my voice that makes it into the microphone. And we'll see if that's the case. Now we'll just switch it a little bit more around so I'm at the, say, seven o'clock position to the back of the microphone. And now the back of the microphone itself it's facing into the wind. So what we're looking for here is the off-axis rejection. So how well does it, sorry about that handling noise there, I'm sure there's a lot of handling noise, but what we're trying to figure out is how does it reject the sound from the side uh, so that if you're out in public in there and you're doing some recording, how much is it going to focus on your voice rather than the environment around you? So looking at the documentation itself, there's uh, a graph that shows what the polar pattern of the microphone is. And I'll try and put that, see if we can get that on the screen here. But there's a polar pattern. And it says in the documentation that it's a cardio, uh, super cardioid microphone. But the picture in here shows a cardioid pattern with just the tiniest lobe of sensitivity in the back indicating like a super cardioid or hypercardioid might reveal itself. It, the, the documentation and the diagram, I would say, don't match. And I'm not sure which is the truth. So the it, it could be more like a cardioid. And that's why I did that, that side, that side on um, sound test to see how it how it matches up. So as we spin that around, how does it how does it match up to the what we want to know is how what what's the actual pattern of the microphone as opposed to what it stated. So if we get sound from the side, so if we do get sound from the side and it's still reasonably clear, then we know that it's a cardioid pattern. But if I drop off significantly from the side, then we know it's a much more of a super cardioid and that will help from a side rejection of the noise. Finally, this is what it would look like in a vlogging situation. So I have it at about arm's reach and I'm looking directly into the lens with the microphone on the top. And so that's, this is a typical, what you would expect from a typical vlogging, uh, vlogging setup. This is how you might expect this to work. But overall, I've been uh, reasonably impressed. I mean, the, the microphone itself, it sounds great. I think it could benefit from a slightly better uh, wind puff, but that's just, it's how it works. It's uh, what you get at, at the $50 price point. So right now there's a plane going overhead and I thought it would be interesting to know. So it's directly overhead from me right now. I thought it'd be interesting to see how that, um, how the pattern rejects that noise as the plane goes by. See if you can still hear it. My, my guess is you are, you probably still can hear it. But the reason I have the microphone off is I also want to show that just with a regular headphone extension cable, you can get a lot more distance. So you don't have to keep this mounted directly to the camera itself. Just with a regular, this is a, I think an eight or a 10 foot extension cable, you can get just a basic tripod adapter sorry for the handling noise you can get just a basic tripod adapter maybe one that sits on the desk and you can actually keep the camera or keep the camera far away from the microphone and so now you can create uh, a setup where you're farther away from the camera itself and you can still have the remote microphone you don't have to do something wireless this is a far less expensive option than doing something like a wireless setup you can do a wired setup, not have to worry about batteries, not have to worry about interference from cell phones or anything like that. The wired option still can work. This can work whether or not it's plugged into your smartphone, assuming you've got the right dongles and adapters, or it can go directly into your camera. So in this case, I've got it, you know, a fair distance away. Might help for framing, might help you be able to frame the shot to get a, a better blurry background or something like that. You don't have to keep this mounted directly to the camera. That's also how you saw it set up in the studio where it was mounted in the, in the mic adapter. This just has a, a quarter inch 20, uh, 20 thread count uh, receiver on the bottom, same as you would find on any camera, on uh, anything that's compatible with a, a camera tripod. It's the same mount for the microphone. So really handy little addition there. Okay, so that sums up our outdoor test. Let's take it back to the studio and I'll show you one more place where I think this, uh, this microphone can really help with uh, a streaming setup.
Another place where I found this microphone really handy is in my home control room. Um, I've been doing a lot of Zoom calls and a lot of coaching sessions where people uh, want to get help with uh, their home studio setup. And so I've added this device here, actually these two devices here. These are the ATEM series of um, sort of capture cards, switchers, um, that allow me to share my desktop and so forth. And it has a microphone input that I'll show you that this microphone works really well on the microphone input. So just keeping that exact same setup that you just saw us use at the beach, we can plug this into the ATEM itself. So what this means is now when I'm working with a client and they see this view, I can also have the mic down on my desk that's out of, way, out of my way, it's not obtrusive, just works, just plug and play, requires no extra power, no extra phantom power, anything like that. I can just plug the little dynamic shotgun microphone in. So I always have a hot mic as I'm working with Zoom, as I'm working with clients. I can do everything else on all of my desktops. I can route sound for my DAW, but always have a nice, out of the way, unobtrusive, hot mic. So I can always make sure I'm in touch with the client or whoever I'm talking with over Zoom. And I can still make all of the adjustments from all of my screen. So from an ATEM Mini perspective, if you're just looking for a little extra microphone to add to your ATEM Mini setup, a little microphone like this would be a perfect addition. So let's sum up. The Movo VXR10 Pro microphone, dynamic shotgun microphone, Great little microphone for $50. I've been really happy with it. I've used it a, I've used it a bunch over the, the course of the past couple of weeks. I'm not compensated by Movo at all. They have no editorial input into this. They just ask if I'd like to, to put this video out. I get to keep the microphone. I guess that's the sum total of my compensation. So 50, 50 bucks here. Um, but they don't get any influence over this. It's just been a microphone that I've used. It's been easy to use. It works with my cameras. It works with my A10 Mini. <clears throat> been really easy, been really easy to work with. So maybe it's something that if you're looking for a microphone to add to one of your mirrorless cameras, to your streaming setup, if you have an ATEM Mini, you're looking for an external microphone to use it, maybe it's the maybe it's the right one for you. I leave that as an exercise to your judgment to see if it is the right thing. But I wanted to make sure that I, I shared it with you and gave it a fair shake in a bunch of different situations where I would use this microphone to see if it helps in the way you would use the microphone. It's the best I can do it. But I hope it helps. I hope it helps. I hope it helps if you're if you're looking for a microphone. I hope it helps you make your decision one way or the other. That's all I have for you today. So get yourself a microphone, any microphone, maybe this little shotgun microphone, but get yourself a microphone and get out there and record something amazing. Thanks. We'll talk to you next time. Take care.